obviously up to you. Thank you so much. So again, I'm uh, Bob Zog from just a little north here in Carlisle. I represent the Heat Smart Alliance. Um, our basic mission is to promote the use of high energy efficiency heat pumps throughout Massachusetts. We focus on home heating and cooling and also water heating. We're an all volunteer organization. We've got roughly 54 participants right now in 29 different communities and mostly in Eastern Mass right now, but we're looking, aspiring to uh, spread further west. Our basic approach is to educate through events like this and also through uh, our website. We also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching with people who want to evaluate heat pumps for their homes. That's on an as-available basis. As their supply doesn't quite uh, match demand these days, but we do our best. And we collaborate with like-minded organizations. And just to make sure we have no conflicts of interest, we do not accept any donations or referral fees from installers or manufacturers. So why should you consider heat pumps for your home? Number one, uh, let's look at the energy use of your home. It's fully 30%, residential energy is fully 30% of our energy use here in New England. If you break that down, 60% plus is for home heating and cooling. Another 17 or 18% is for water heating and even a couple percent for clothes drying, which can be done with heat pumps. So roughly 80% of the energy needs of your homes could be fulfilled with heat pumps. That's a big deal. If you want to decarbonize your home, there are really three basic steps. Number one is weatherize. That means insulate and air seal to the fullest practical extent. And most of you are eligible for a free home energy assessment Please take advantage of that and weatherize as much as you can. Get your cooling and heating loads as low as possible. That's always the first thing you want to do. Step two is to electrify. That means replacing the equipment and the appliances in your home that currently operate on fossil fuels with high efficient electric equipment and appliances. And that's where heat, heat pumps come in. While you're at it, don't forget about your vehicles. Shift to renewable electricity is step number three. So once you're fully on electricity, make sure you're getting your electricity from clean, green sources. You could put solar on your roof, but you don't have to. Virtually everyone has access to 100% renewable electricity through your local utility. So what is a heat pump? We all intuitively know that heat flows naturally from warmer places to cooler places. But if we want to move heat from a cooler place to a warmer place, we need to use a mechanical device. We need to add energy to do that. And that's basically what a heat pump is. Now, we all have heat pumps in our homes now. We don't call them heat pumps, but our refrigerators or air conditioners or dehumidifiers all work on the same basic principle of a heat pump. So it's nothing strange or weird. And as I mentioned earlier, the heat pumps are available for home heating and home cooling. So that's one piece of equipment that does both heating and cooling. They're available for your water heating. They're even available for your swimming pool heaters or your clothes dryers too. This simple example illustrates how the efficiency of a heat pump can be greater than 100%. This shows one unit of energy coming from the electric grid being used to pump another two units of energy from outdoors into your home to get a total of three units of energy delivered to heat your home. So in this case, that's an efficiency of 300%. Some types of heat pumps can even get higher efficiencies. What are the benefits? What I like to list first is comfort. It's okay to be comfortable in your home and heat pumps will help you get there. This illustration in the bottom shows, the yellow line shows how most cooling and heating equipment operates. It's either on full blast or it's off. That results in temperature swings in your home. Our bodies are very sensitive to that. It results in discomfort. Modern heat pumps are variable speed. They tune right into the exact amount of heating and cooling that your home needs, and they deliver that amount of heating and cooling. Temperature stays is really consistent, high level of comfort. Substantial reduction in your greenhouse gas emissions. We'll talk about that in the next slide. Energy cost savings. We'll get into more details here, but for now, 
You'll get some energy cost savings compared to uh, fuel oil and quite a bit more compared to uh, conventional electric heating or propane. Based on recent natural gas prices, it's still a little bit cheaper to heat with natural gas, but we'll talk more about that in a minute, uh, a few minutes. And it makes your home safer. You're not burning anything in your home, so far fewer risks. Okay, let's look at our emissions. This uh, illustration shows several different heating systems and what their annual carbon footprint looks like for each one. This is for a 2,000 square foot home with typical construction characteristics uh, in Massachusetts. And you can see right away that the heat pumps, the air source or the ground source heat pumps, by far have lower emissions than the fossil fuel alternatives. And if you want to get those emissions to virtually zero, again, get your electricity from a renewable source. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of heat pumps, what might be right for your home. I like to suggest people start by looking at your current system, and what I mean is your current heating distribution system. You either probably used hydronic or forced air. Those are two most common systems. Hydronic systems, some kind, sometimes called forced hot water. Uh, it might even be a steam system if you have an older system. Uh, if you have that type of a, a distribution system in your home without duct work, don't worry, you can still put in heat pumps. Most people will use these mini split heat pumps. They'll have an outdoor unit, that's the box in the lower left, and an indoor unit that's commonly mounted on a wall that's in each of the rooms that you want to heat or cool. And it's connected by a couple of small copper lines that can be run uh, and easily hidden uh, by a conduit along the outside of your house, sometimes even inside a wall if it's new construction. Um, a little variation on that is what we call a multi-split. This is just a mini split that has one outdoor unit connected to multiple indoor units. Um, in either case, with a mini split or a multi-split, you can have different configurations for the indoor units. Again, the wall mount is probably the most common, but they can be ceiling recessed, they can be floor mounted. They can even be uh, inserted in the walls and serve two rooms adjacent to each other. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. And you can keep your uh, existing hydronic heating system as backup uh, to use in emergencies or use when it, on really cold days. I just mentioned briefly, there's a variation on this uh, called an air to water heat pump that you may want to use, especially if you have um, radiant floor heating. Uh, that's a great example where an air to water heat pump might work. It can be used with other types of hydronic systems. Um, but there's a few caveats that I won't get into today. If you have duct work already in your home, you're probably a candidate for a central ducted heat pump. The outdoor unit, the picture in the middle, looks a lot like an air conditioning outdoor unit. You just mount it up on a pedestal to keep it out of the snow. There's two options for the indoor unit. Um, the one on the right uh, shows an indoor unit that's all electric. In this case, it has the indoor part of the heat pump provide heating and cooling that's then circulated through ductwork through your home. And uh, it also has electric resistance backup elements to supplement during the coldest days. You don't have to have those backup elements. You can size the heat pump to serve the whole heating and cooling load, but most people choose to have a little bit of backup. Or if you'd like to keep fossil fuels, the system on the left simply integrates your furnace in with that air handling unit. So again, on the colder days, you can use your furnace uh, with your conventional fossil fuels to supplement your heating. Now the ultimate in energy efficiency is a ground source heat pump. These are also called geothermal heat pumps. As the name implies, they extract heat from the ground or reject heat to the ground. Now the ground retain, uh, keeps a uniform temperature, 50-55 degrees year round. So it makes a great source or great sink for a heat pump. They're also aesthetically very nice because there's no mechanical equipment outdoors above grade. Once everything's installed, you don't have to look at any uh, mechanical boxes. The equipment uh, that's indoors looks a lot like uh, the equipment for a uh, 
conventional air source heat pump. An important caveat here, your installer will have to inspect your existing ductwork to make sure it's adequate for a heat pump or can be made adequate. It has to be proper uh, cross-sectional area. It should be reasonably well insulated and air sealed, especially any ductwork that's in attic spaces. Um, so that's an important caveat. If your ductwork really can't be brought up to uh, standards for a heat pump, you're still a candidate for the mini or multi-split systems we just talked about. And if you have electric baseboard, again, a mini or multi-split system is uh, the way to go there. Let's not forget about our water heating. Very important here. Heat pump water heaters, or sometimes called hybrid water heaters, can save more than 60% on your energy and your carbon emissions compared to conventional electric water heaters. They have face, fast payback periods compared to conventional electric. Uh, any plumber can put one of these in. Now, not every plumber will put them in, so you will have to shop around a bit to find one willing to do it, but they're not difficult to install. Um, so they're a great idea to incorporate heat pumps to heat your water. We'll talk about cost a little bit here. Um, first, let's talk about the cost to heat and cool your, well, cost to heat your home. And this is the same 2,000 square foot home we looked at for the emissions reductions. In this case, we're showing the annual energy costs for heating. And this is based on the most recent heating season we just came through. You'll notice that the order of the bars is a little different this time. Natural gas, it turns out, uh, is the lowest cost system by a small margin. That doesn't mean if you're using natural gas now that you're not a candidate for a heat pump. You may find that that difference in energy cost is not that big, one, and two, might not even be there in another year. Uh, and three, if your equipment needs replacing, you know, you may find out that the heat pump is just as uh, cheap uh, just as uh, a, a similar cost to replacing what you already have if you have to put in both heating and cooling. So please, even if you have natural gas, consider heat pumps. Again, you can integrate them with your natural gas system and you can actually run the heat pump when it's at the warmer temperatures, when it's the cheapest to operate. The heat pumps run more efficiently the warmer it is. So you, there is some point where you do get a cost advantage. And these charts are pretty conservative. They're based on 29 cent electricity. Uh, that's the most recent national grid rate. Many of you have access to lower cost electricity, so you might see uh, even better economics here. And again, no one can predict future energy costs. We know fossil fuel costs, we know natural gas costs are going up. That will somewhat drive electricity prices as well. So we have to live with that uncertainty about future prices. If you like to do financial analyses, um, well, first of all, let's talk about the financial incentives. I'm getting ahead of myself. If you're in a, a town that has access to the Mass Save incentive plans, I won't go through all of these, but the, 2000, the 2022 incentives from Mass Save have really gotten a lot better. There are big numbers here: $10,000 to $15,000 per home for heat pumps. Uh, there's even an incentive for heat pump water heaters. There's a zero interest loan available. These are good incentives. If you go with ground source, there's a 26% federal uh, credit available, tax credit available. And there's a small tax credit available for air source heat pumps or heat pump water heaters as well. And you don't have to pay any state income tax. If you live in a town that has a municipal light plant, check with your uh, local utility to see what uh, incentives you may have access to. Uh, in some cases, if you're a natural gas customer, you might still have access to mass save incentives. Okay, now to financial analysis. If you'd like to do spreadsheets and do all these calculations and do a net present value analysis, that's wonderful. But make sure you use the right numbers. Don't just look at the first cost of a heat pump, look at the cost difference between the heat pump and replacing your conventional equipment, both your cooling and your heating system. You're eventually going to have to replace them. So look at the right cost difference. 
look at the value of the incentives and the tax credits and all that stuff. Depending on your value system, you may also want to put a value on carbon emissions. You may want to consider their impact on resale value. There's a, a recent study out of the University of Maryland that shows a 4 to 7 percent premium on home resale value for homes that have heat pumps. That's pretty nice. And just the comfort benefits are worth something. And again, we understand there's uncertainties about the future energy costs. We can't say for sure what's going to be cheapest, but uh, that's a personal decision. So what should your action plan be? First and foremost, do not wait for your current equipment to fail. If your heating or your cooling system is more than you know, 15 years old or so, it's time to start thinking about how you're going to replace it. For your water heater, it's more like seven to 10 years. These water heaters don't tend to last as long. If you wait until your equipment fails, you're going to have an urgent replacement situation. You're not gonna have time to evaluate alternatives. You will be forced to go out and replace fossil fuel with fossil fuel. To replace your air conditioner with another air conditioner, heaven forbid, and you'll lock your home into fossil fuels for another 10 or 20 years. I know everyone's busy, but please, please think ahead, plan ahead, and have a path of action for when your current equipment gets old or gets close to failure. Don't wait for failure. If you want to get air conditioning, central air conditioning in your home, and you don't have it already, a great opportunity to put in a heat pump. And certainly, if you're renovating or expanding your home or building a new home, heat pumps are really the only way to go. How to get started? HeatSmartAlliance.org, our website has a bunch of useful information. We also have links to other sites uh, that we think you'll find useful. Again, uh, most of you will have access to a free home energy assessment if you haven't had one or haven't had one in the last couple of years, that's a great place to start. Get the uh, uh, weatherization done. Uh, Mass Save will let you know what incentives you uh, have uh, access to through, uh, through that home energy assessment. And uh, the uh, incentives are quite attractive for uh, insulating and air sling. The Heat Smart Alliance. Uh, and some towns uh, also do this on their own, provide one-on-one -on -one coaching to people who want to evaluate heat pumps. Heat Smart Alliance sees more demand for coaching than we have supply of coaches, but we do our best. Uh, don't hesitate to uh, apply through a website. And when it comes time to talk to installers, we do recommend talking to multiple installers. Each installer will see something a little different in your home, give you different ideas about what they can do. And when you do get quotes, please consider the big picture. This is not just a first cost decision. Look at the reputation of the installer, very important. Look at the quality of the equipment. And factor all that in along with cost when you make your choice. So that's my talk for today. I wanted to make sure we left time for questions. Um, I'll also be available uh, in the cafeteria until five. Um, Let's just open up the floor, yes. Um, should go back to the slide with the incentives. Very at the end of your, your discussion on that slide, you spoke about if you have a gas system, you might still be eligible for some incentives. So this is my understanding, and I would definitely verify this, but I've been told that if you are served, if you have gas service from one of the major investor-owned utilities like Eversource or National Grid, even if you're in a town that has a municipal light plant, you are still eligible for mass save incentives. So that's what I've been told. It's true. It's true. I it's true. Good. good. Thank you. <laughs> and I had mass save out to my house. Thank you for confirming that. Other questions? Yes, sir. So the issue of finding good advice, yeah. and in for that, or even finding a good HVAC contractor. How do you really judge reputation? I mean, that's, uh, and, uh, you know, obviously some are under I know that. Is there, is there progress on that? Because I know that it's gotten several years when I had difficulty judging any of that. What's people's experience? Are we getting better at that? 
Yeah, that's probably the toughest part of this whole process. And it's, it doesn't matter whether you're putting in a heat pump or a conventional heating system or painting your house or doing an addition on your home. We've all been through it as homeowners. It is a difficult process to evaluate installers and contractors, and I, I won't pretend it's not. Um, it certainly helps to talk to people who have done heat pumps in your, in your uh, community, see what their experiences have been, look at how long these companies have been in business, try to get information on the reputation. Sometimes online reviews can help, but you'll always find bad reviews, always find good reviews. We at the Heat Smart Alliance, while we don't endorse any particular installer, we do try to steer people in a direction that might help them end up with installers that are better. But in the end, uh, right now, we still recommend getting a few different quotes and you know, really listening to what the installer is saying. How are they answering your questions? Uh, are they listening to your needs carefully or are they pushing what they want to sell? Those are some tips. Um, I guess the other thing too, uh, most heat pump brands have, um, manufacturers have a um, installer uh, rating system, I'll call it for lack of a better word, but they'll, like Mitsubishi has, you know, their diamond Mitsubishi installers and other uh, brands have different names. Now part of that is an uh, installer can get that uh, that stamp of approval from the manufacturer based on someone on sales volume, which is not what you're looking for necessarily, but it's more than that. They also look at how happy the customers are. So if you get that um, stamp of approval from the manufacturer on, on the uh, on installer's website, that's worth something too. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, that's really loud. <laughs> I've been tricked by giving the microphone. Um, so, I think one of the urban rumors I've already heard is that heat pumps aren't super efficient in a New England winter. So, so how how does a, a heat pump behave, you know, when it gets really cold in in New England? That's a great question. Um, unfortunately, heat pumps of decades ago generally weren't very good in cold winter climates. But over the past couple of decades, they've gotten a lot better. Now, you have to buy the right heat pump. You want to look at uh, these variable speed heat pumps that are driven by an inverter. I'll use a little jargon here. HSPF, heating seasonal performance factor, is the you know fuel economy, if you will, for a heat pump. I would say look for units that have 10 or better for an air source heat pump on the HSPF ratings. If you get the good equipment, it works really well in cold climates. Some equipment will operate down to minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, my heat pump doesn't go quite that low, but mine provides uh, heating down to maybe zero Fahrenheit. And I require no electric backup. Uh, I do have electric backup. I require no electric backup down to maybe 15. Fahrenheit, and I have nothing special for a home. It's kind of standard construction, 1970s vintage. So uh, even if you need a little bit of supplemental uh, heat, you can do displace 80, 90 percent of your home heating load very efficiently here in New England. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 add to your uh, comment that uh, the Mitsubishi unit uh, will maintain the same coefficient of performance down to a zero a bit low. So uh, it does take more electricity because it's running more, but uh, it does have a very high coefficient of uh, performance. Yeah, I'll take your word for that. I, Generally speaking, heat pumps do lose some efficiency as it gets colder, but manufacturers have done a lot with the control systems to help moderate that and many of the manufacturers are getting really good performance down to five Fahrenheit. Not just good capacity, but also good efficiency as well. So, other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, the Massachusetts climate plan is heading towards more uh, electrification. Is there, what impact is this going to have on uh, heating appliances? Are we going to have to uh, be required to have heat pumps or this kind of equipment? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, 
It, I think it's fair to say, I don't want to be too pessimistic, it's fair to say that Massachusetts is not moving as quickly as it needs to to meet its goals. And if we want to hit our 2030 goals, that's seven and a half years from now, we need to put in a million heat pumps between now and then. We've only got 2.7 million homes in the whole state. That's a lot of heat pumps. Um, I won't uh, venture to guess whether it will get to mandates, but if mandates do uh, come out, I'm, they're certainly will first start a new construction. There are a number of communities uh, across Massachusetts that are working on that right now to just make sure that new construction is all electric. That's certainly where you want to start. You don't want to have to go back and retrofit uh, you know, that equipment over to electric, but it's a tough question to ask. I, I hope we, we do everything we can to meet those goals, but I, I don't know how far we'll go on the regulatory front. Anything else? And again, I'll be uh, in the cafeteria until 5. If you have questions about your specific issue, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, everybody.